Uh, what's the biggest, this is just random because I think of this stuff when we talk, you know, whether we are in person or not. What's the biggest advance you see coming still in the next five or 10 years? I mean, the biggest advance that could knock our socks off and say, wow, this is a real game changer, whether it's a year, three, five years. I mean, if you ask me that question, I would think maybe it's immune therapy, but I don't know. I never would have predicted these other things coming up on the market, you know, all these anti-androgen products. What do you think is going to be the big game changer or triple or home run we see in the future? What would you think? Uh, three things. I think it'll be the better scans. I mm -hmm. think it'll be the immune therapy you mentioned. And then I think it'll be the uh, discoveries that these micro RNAs that, you know, we tried to, uh, with the genetic tests that we have now that look at structural proteins, we really milk that cow for all its milk. There isn't much left there and not much has changed in the last, you know, three, four, five years. But 90% of the DNA is making micro RNAs, which are regulatory. And cancer, if you think about it, is probably a regulatory problem. So as they start to sniff out what these micro RNAs are doing and they start finding ways to adjust and, uh, and to use those as a treatment paradigm, I expect absolutely amazing advances to come. So um, genetics, especially micro RNAs, the better scanning, which we've talked about, and the uh, uh, better understanding of the immune system, I think those will be the big three probably in the next five, 10 years. And in my world, I hope the greatest advance is that people realize that they have a lot more control uh, than is told that they have, especially when it comes to making their own personal changes to improve their quality of life and outcome. Mm -hmm. I am troubled by seeing, and I told this to Claude's, I am troubled that now in the active surveillance trials, including, remember we talked about the meal trial that Parsons ran? I, when I was asked to review the, that paper, and I talk about it in lectures and with students, I found the most troubling thing wasn't the diet didn't work, it, in that situation, it wasn't uh, anything but the fact that when I looked at the baseline characteristics of the patients in that trial, the average patient in active surveillance was a BMI of almost 30. So you're already starting out. Look, I know weight loss is hard. It's the hardest thing we do. But you're already starting out not only with prostate cancer at the early stages, but already metabolically unhealthy. And so we're seeing that across the spectrum in prostate cancer, whether it's some of the chemo trials, whether it's the hormone trials. 20 years ago, the average BMI was 25, 26, like you see in some other countries. Now you're coming in at 30. And now you're talking about a disease that really accelerates this metabolic unhealthiness. And so my worry is that we're gonna get these advances that you speak of, and we're gonna go, yay! And then people are going to be dying at record numbers of heart attacks and strokes because they were so metabolically unhealthy. One, because they started unhealthy, and they two, they didn't, weren't able to make the lifestyle changes, which I know are hard. And three, because these drugs, as awesome as they are, in many cases can make you more metabolically unhealthy. So I just hope we come to the realization, I know you practice that, I know I practice that, but I just wish people would understand that this game is about probability. It's not just about beating prostate cancer, it's about living longer and better. And if you beat prostate cancer, but you're dealing with raging diabetes, and it's not controlled or hypertension, you've got problems. You're just gonna go on to the next problem. Uh, so that's so that. The nice thing about that, that, we know it's a great challenge, but this is one, one thing that is completely under the control of the patient. So the the, Sad thing is it's a very difficult mountain to climb, very. but there is a possibility of climbing the mountain. There's nothing standing in the way of people, uh, you know, getting the counseling they need, hiring a trainer, surrounding themselves with like-minded people, become a problem solver. And it uh, not only pays off in terms of living longer, I mean, your self-esteem goes up, you feel better, you think better, your memory's better, all kinds of uh, marvelous things come if you're able to implement this. And it's... Uh, it's good that you keep reminding us of that because it is one thing that's under the patient's control.